Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in today's wonderful tutorial, I'll be showing you how to read some of the most commonly used file format in data science with Julia, right? So there's this website that is datasets data.gov, and then you can have several data sets that you want. So it gives you the chance to select several file formats, right? So you can have CSV, JSON, SML, even an API. So I'll be showing you how to read RDF and then SML. So there are several file formats. So if you want to select it, you can go down here and then you choose the file format. So there are several file formats that you want to choose. You can choose from. You can HTML, you can choose zip file, test. So we'll be seeing how to read the most commonly used ones in Julia. So first of all, let's start. So one of the packages that will help you to read most of these file format is data frames, right? So first of all, we start. So that is the first thing. So how to read a normal CSV file. So all my files have downloaded them here most of the files here file format so we'll be seeing how to read them so first we go with using data frames and then we store it inside df then we use read table so read table is one of the ways of reading our data set right it's very very useful so it's able to accept not only csv but csv and then wsv file format so if you read it it's perfectly working so that this is our data set perfectly so that's one of the ways of reading it. Now, the other thing we can also do, you can check for the head. Since you have started as DF, you can check for the head, and then it's going to give us the first five values. So that's one of the ways of reading our CSV file, that is comma separated. So another way of reading is you can also read a TSV file. So TSV file is a tab separated file, right? That is tab separated file. So we can use the same read table to read it. And then it's going to work although it is tst but it's tab separated so let me see whether i'll be able to show you the file that there's a file so you see that there is no comma instead of it being comma separated it's not comma separated but it's tab separated okay perfect so that's one of the files that you'll be reading that is a tab separated file so to read it just go with read table the read table is able to accept it and detect it perfectly so it's going to print it together like this which is not the best way so you can actually bring a delimiter so this is not actually the best way so you can bring a delimiter and then it's going to be like this so reading it with a delimiter is going to be like the normal read table then the file and then you bring the separator so the separator is going to be the delimiter and then the backslash t is for tab so it's going to read it like a tab format perfect so reading it in a perfect format that is readable so that is how to read a tab file. Now let's see how to read another file format, which is reading a normal TST file. So this is, you don't need to import any package. This is inbuilt. So you can just use open, test the file. Then the mode is going to be R and you are storing it as F, right? This is automatically going to read, open it and then close it without ha having to call close. And I'm going to read a string because it's a string. If it's, if it's lines, you just make it like lines right if so that is one of the ways of reading but because it's only a string inside that's why i'm using it with string so it's going to print it perfectly hello, hello world this is a test okay. now let's see how to use excel right we're using how to read files with excel so to read files with excel there are several ways you can read excel files right so we can use tarot which is you can, you can use tarot, we can use data frames, you can use SL files, SL readers. So to install tarot, just go with pkg.add tarot, and then you can also do pkg.add SL files or SL readers. Okay, so we'll be using SL readers. So to read it is just simple. One of the, there is a, the simplest way is just to go with read Excel sheet, right? So read SL sheet is going to read the entire sheet, the whole sheet itself, right? So read Excel sheet, then the name of the Excel file, test file, Excel dot X, L, X, X, then you supply this sheet. It's very, very important that you bring this, otherwise it's not going to, it's going to give you errors, right? Other than sheet, it's going to read the entire sheet. So it's reading it perfectly, all the sheets there. Okay, another way you can also read is that you can also read it by row, by ranges. So that's why I'm going to use read SL, not read Excel sheet. But read Excel, right? So in that case, it's going to read the test file and then the sheet that is the first sheet, and from the range A1 to C4. So it's going to read only A1 to C4, which is perfect. That's one of the ways of reading using the 
Excel readers. Another way you can also read an Excel file is to use you read it in this format. You can use the Excel, the same Excel that you have, read Excel from the Excel readers, and then they're going to pass it into a data frame that is data frame from for package and I'm going to read the sheet so it's going to read this entire stuff as a data frame straight away into a data frame instead of being a data array in a previous one this is going to be in a data frame so that you can actually manipulate it that that is one of the ways of reading it and the final way of reading is which is usually the most basic for all files if you want to read every file you can just use using file io then you supply it in this way so the most important thing is this and this right so with this format you can read any file that is loaded in the name of the file but because you want to pass it as a data frame you'll be using data frame so you'll be passing this load file you want to load this excel file the whole sheet and then it's going to store it as a data frame so it's going to read it perfectly as a data frame which is one of the ways of reading it when you're using the file I okay so now let's move on to some of the files you can also read so if you check for it you realize that it is now a data frame so you can use it's in, in every way that you can use the data frame. So the next file format we want to read is how to read a JSON file, right? Just like we had a JSON file here. This one, how do you read a JSON file like that? So there are several ways you can use data frames itself or data frames IO, which is the preferred way we can use JSON. So this is how to use the data frames IO, but let's see how to read it with a uh, with the JSON, right? So for the JSON, it's just using JSON and then DF underscore json so json pass file so if it's a string you just go with this if it is a string it's going to be like this if it's a string it's going to be json dot pass right that's if it's a string but if it is not a string and it's a file then you bring pass file and you read it like this pass file that is if it's not a string and it's a file format okay so let's see So if you check it, it's going to perfectly read it for us. And it's going to read it as a dictionary because it's, it's reading it as a Julia dictionary because it's a JSON file format. And then it's supposed to be a valid JSON file, not an invalid one. It's supposed to be a, it's supposed to have the right format of JSON. Okay, so we can apart from that, we can also pass whatever file that you have read into data frame because this is a dictionary. So we can just since it's reading it as a dictionary, you can actually pass it into the data frame and want to read it as a data frame, right? Perfect. So if you check for the type of it, you can tell us that it's a data frame. It's, it's no more a JSON, but it's now a data frame object. Okay, perfect. So now let's see another one way of reading it in a simple way. Instead of doing it for the long process of calling JSON file and then data frame, you can do it as a one-liner. So how do you do that? It's quite simple. You can just go with new df, then data frame, then json dot pass file. So you are passing this file straight into this data frame. That is one of the ways of reading it. Another alternative of reading is to use this format. Another alternative of reading it is to use the pipe sentence, right? This is a pipe sentence. So you can just pass the file. So it's going to take this file that is passing, then pipe it or redirect it to this function. It's supposed to be a function, right? It's supposed to be an input function. So you're going to pass it and it's going to see it as a data frame. Perfect. Just like the previous one here. Okay. So now let's see how to read a zip file. So how do you read a zip file? To read a zip file, you need this package. So zip file. So you just install it with pkg.add. Then install it to this format. So pkg.add. Then zip file. So the character. Okay, that is one of the ways of reading this, right? Perfect. So using zip file, then go to compile and go with zip file dot reader. So it's going to read the file. And then it's going to tell us what is inside that file. It's going to compress it, unzip it. So after unzipping it, you store it as we are storing it as R. And then we are going to go with files. So the files is going to list all the files, and then we can read whatever thing that is inside it with read table. And then we're going to print it out from this df.zip that you have stored it inside. So if you check it, it's going to tell us that it's a data frame. Perfect. That's one of the ways of reading it. Now let's see how to read uh, an S file, which is an SML file. So how do you read an SML file? So to read an SML file, you just need this package, like SML, and then you can install it with pkg dot add light SML, right? 
so that is what I'm doing of reading it and then of adding it. So after adding it, you just go with using light SML. It's going to compile. Then after compiling it, you can just use some pass the file, right? So pass file and then the name of the file. Today is the file itself that we want to read the SML file. We realize that the sentence of SML is like this. If you check for this here, so that the SML file is in a totally different format. Okay, so we see that that's how an SML file is. This is an example of an SML file, right? Perfect. So now let's see how to read it. So to read it is going to be like this. Okay, so so to read an SML file, it's going to be like this. So you are going to pass it to so pass file SML, and then it's going to show us whatever is there. Okay, so you see that it does open perfectly. So this is the SML file. So you have passed it and it's going to read all of these things perfectly for us, which is cool. It's quite plenty. So now after that, we can read it with root. So all these things are functions. So root is going to tell us the root of the file, right? Okay, so we see that it's reading it perfectly. So now let's see some other things we can also do. So there are several things we can do. We can even print the name of this file itself. So let's do that. We can just print the name and it's going to tell us the name of the S roots that we stored here, right? So it's going to be response. So if you want to check some for some of the functions you can do, you can just use post and then it's going to give us all the things that we can do with this file. So you see that we can have all these functions that you can do, right? SLM, document, add C child, as add child, out test. There are several of these functions you can do with this package. Okay, so now let's move on to how to read an HDF file that is Heracal data format. So how do you read it? This is not for Hadoop, this is for <laughs> HDF, right? Okay, so Hadoop is a different way. So now let's see how to do that. Just go with this package, you just install this package, pkg.addhdf5. So it's going to be like this. Uh, pkg.add, then hdf5, right? To ask you some questions, then you just to follow through just like the normal installation. Okay, that's how to add it. So now let's see how to do that. So after installing it, it's going to pre-compile, upload several stuff, and then let's see how to read it. To read an HDF HDF5 file, it's also called an H5 file. You just go with this format. The simplest way is just go with HDF underscore H5. That's how we are storing it. The variable we are storing it. Then H5 open when you're opening this file. Right, so perfect. So it's going to read it perfectly for us. Now it has open, and then we are going to store it as DF. So when you check for the type of it, it's going to be an HDF5 file. So the only way of reading it is just go straight away with read, and then it's going to read it as a dictionary. Perfect. So since it's a dictionary, you can just work with it, but you can just work with it like that. So there's another way also of checking what is inside the HDF file, right? To check what is inside the location. So just use names. So you can just go like this without the ETF file, but it's, I prefer this one because so that I don't I'm able to differentiate these names from the name from data frames okay so perfect it's going to tell me that it's having this Z element there and you can dump it you can dump whatever thing that is there outside so you see whatever is inside right so perfect so it's giving us an, a metadata about what is inside this file right so this is a file name and then it's the ID of this okay so that's how to read an ETF five file Okay, so another way is that we can also use Taro. Taro can also be used to read Excel files. So Taro is one of the files that is just like data frames, but it can be used to read most of these file formats like docs, like uh, Excel files. So to read it, just add it pkg.add Taro. Then just using Taro. So there are several functions you can do with Taro. There are a lot of functions you can do. You can just use work, workbook for Excel. You can get Excel sheet, get through, get sheet several of them can create you can do a lot of things so let's first of all in using tarot you have to always initialize after calling sorry after calling the using right you must always initialize it after using tarot <laughs> after this using tarot you must always initialize it tarot dot in it okay perfect so so let's see how to read an SL file with tarot to read an SL file with tarot to go with tarot dot sl dot read sl there is one i'm bringing this is I don't want it to conflict with the one for Excel readers, right? Okay. 
So the same format, it's going to supply the sheets and the rings that you want you to read. And it's going to read it perfectly for us, which is quite nice. And that is the advantage about Taro. So we can use it like a data frame. I'm going to check for the head and it's going to work perfectly. So now the final thing is that let's see how to read an HTML. So how do you read an HTML file? So you can use request. You can use HTTP dot uh, gl request dot gl or gumbo or gumbo <laughs> dot gl so just use using request then there's a url so this is the url will be taking it from and then you can just go with read table then request right dot get streaming and then it apply the url that you want to read it so and then i'm using enrows because it's having issues that far so i just want to read only the third row i'm going to read it perfectly in this way okay so to read another way of reading it you can also use it here http to do that okay so now let's see how to read with gumbo gumbo or gumbo is, is the same thing just go with using gumbo and then you're going to use df underscore html1 you're going to pass in our html file so i have an html file which i've already stored is test html dot html so i'm going to pass this html so if i check it it's going to open it perfectly like an html document and again so you can also check several several of the functions you can do with who's then who's is going to list all the things that you can do with jumbo or jumbo <laughs> okay gumbo gumbo not jumbo <laughs> okay so these are some of the things you can also do you can also use pretty print which is a function here to print it in a nice format perfect okay now let's see the last but one i think the last one on the last but one so how do you read a doc file with taro so with taro you can also use using taro the normal one then taro.extract then I'm going to extract whatever thing is inside this doc file, right? And then we're going to read it as a dictionary. Since it's a dictionary, we can extract it. We can read the metadata. You see that this having meta. This one, the meta, this meta are the metadata, the information about the information. <laughs> and then the test itself, right? So meta and then test. Then we're going to extract this in this format. Perfect. So we can it's going to give us as a dictionary of meta and then the data itself. Then we can just use meta, just like how we use we call a dictionary. It's going to work and pick us this name for us this time. Okay, you can also use the test print line to print everything as a test perfectly, which is quite useful and nice. So that is the power of Taro, right? One of the ways of reading these packages in Julia. Now let's see how to read images. Maybe you are doing machine learning, you want to read your images. So there are several ways. One of the ways is to use images package or the image view that is here is the repel. And then you can add image view. You also need to add this package and this image magic. So you can just add that one to as pkg pkg dot add image magic is a wrapper around the file itself, around the package itself, around this software image magic. So that going using file IO, as I said, file IO can be used to open every file. It's the basics of all of them and then going to open our file so if i check it straight away with it's going to use by default image magic to open it perfectly so this is our julia logo perfect okay so thank you for watching if you have any questions or contribution you can just put inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit please don't forget to subscribe there's one last thing there's also some cheat sheets that is on my github so about how to use data frames, right? So there are several cheats on how to use data frames package to read several file formats and to do most of the data analysis. It can be found on GitHub. So thank you. And then please don't forget to subscribe. Stay blessed.